Watch you guys, today we're taking a look at a cheap office mini PC that anyone can afford. This is the Geekom Mini Air 11. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video. So this is everything you get in the box. You're going to get the Mini Air 11. You're going to get HDMI cable, a mini display port to HDMI adapter, your power adapter, your user guide, your storage bag, a VESA mount and screws. Now the price of this is not that expensive. It's $239, which is a pretty cheap, affordable uh, mini PC. If you're on a tight budget, then something like this is going to be right up your street. Now it's not going to break any uh, speed records because it has 11th gen Intel Celeron N5095 processor in there. We have also Intel UHD Graphics 605, which is on board. It does have dual channel support of DDR4, expandable up to 32 gigabytes. This one had eight gigabytes in it. One SSD M.2 SATA drive in there, up to one terabyte you can put in there. It does come pre-installed with Windows 11, and it also has Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. So this is the actual front of the unit. We have a Type-C uh, port on the front, which is data only. USB 3.2 port Gen 2 on the front headphones and speaker input, and also the power button. On this side here, we have your Kensington uh, security slot. And on the back, you can see here, we have our power input, also a mini display port, ethernet port, which is one gigabit ethernet port, USB 3.2 gen one ports on the back, also HDMI port and a USB uh, C port on the back data only as well. And you've got that uh, extraction the heat on the back here, which is like your fan area, which is going to blow all the hot air out of here. We have some ventilation on this side with also an SD card reader, which is nice to have. And on the bottom, you've got the four screws and your VESA mount there where you can mount this to any sort of monitor or wall or whatever it is you want to mount it to. So inside the unit, we've got the four screws which attach to the bottom plate and the furball pad for the M.2 SATA drive there. Let's take a look inside here. Now the parts in here are unknown generic branded parts from China. As you can see here, I can't even pronounce that name. Never heard of them before. Same goes for the RAM. Um, so don't know what the quality of those RAM and M.2 drive in here. This is not an NVMe drive. This is a SATA drive by the looks of it. And we also have room for another RAM slot on here. So you can put uh, more RAM in there if you wish. Now, just to give you full disclosure, Geekom did send me this for review. So my opinion is on my own. No one is paying me for this review. And also, uh, no one is reviewing this review before it's released. So let's take a look at the activation here. Now, you may be wondering why it's not activated. And that's because this was a test sample they sent me. And uh, again, you will get a fully activated version. So on the Geekbench here, we're going to be doing a CPU benchmark test here and we'll see what that comes out like. I'm not expecting it to be massive uh, high scores with this sort of CPU, but you can see single core 635, and the multi-core score is 2014. So that's the score for the Intel Celeron uh, N5095, four megabytes of cache up to 2.9 gigahertz with four cores and four threads. So let's go ahead and run the uh, compute benchmark here, and we'll see what sort of scores we can get with this one. Now, again, because it's such a budget sort of mini PC, you can use this in, uh, you know, camper vans and also for light work like Photoshop, things like that. You've got the 2,126 uh, for this particular score. Now, the thermals are pretty good on this little device. Didn't seem to overheat at all on all the testing that I was doing. And again, I'm not going to be running the Cinebench score on this little system here because I don't think it's worth it because of the budget level of this mini PC. And again, it really does torture these little systems and it sort of makes them thermal throttle and get really hot, which really is a bit pointless because they're not really designed for that amount of workload. So let's do some video testing here. We've got Jellyfish 140 Mbps, which is 4K Ultra HD here, 10-bit. Uh, and you can see it's not struggling at all. It can handle this with no problems at all. So if you want to use this for Plex, you can do. And we've got 4K here, 60 FPS. And uh, this one is super smooth. And I'll try and drag this across. And this is streaming off the internet. So you can see here we're having no problem at all streaming this from their 
uh, website here and I'll quickly jump this again no problems at all no stuttering so it can handle this particular type of 4k content retro gaming again this is not a hardcore gaming system but you can play some light games on here and again this can handle this at 1080p and you can see no problem at all I had to turn this one down at 720p and this is um, you know gods of war it found it a bit more taxing um, it was only getting 40 fps at 1080p so i lowered it down to 720p and it was having no problem at all and i left this at 720p i reckon this can handle 1080p this game but some will handle 1080p and some will handle only 720 depending on what games they are now of course you can play games from the uh, google play store as well there's games on there as long as they're super lightweight you should have no problems with those at all and again, GIMP on here runs really smooth. So if you're looking to do some photo editing or anything like that, then you can do or some light office work like Office 365. And again, this is where this PC is going to come into its own. You can install on here Android or Ubuntu or Fade OS or any of those. You can install Linux, whatever it is you want to install on it. You don't have to use Windows 11 on here. You can install whatever operating system you like on this little system. And you can set it up to do a lot of different things. So if you want dual monitors, you can have dual monitors set up on here, which is 4K, no problem at all. With YouTube streaming, you can do whatever you like with these little mini PCs. So if you're looking for a real budget mini PC, then check out the Geekom uh, Mini Air 11. It's not too bad. I would have liked to have seen an NVMe uh, drive in there rather than a SATA drive uh, because of the uh, type of technology today. But it's not too bad. It can handle a lot of this uh, sort of workload. You can see the system resources here on windows 11 with uh gimp open it's not doing too bad so anyway i'll leave all the information and links in the video description if you're interested in a budget mini pc that doesn't break the bank and uh, i shall catch you in the next video my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my youtube members who join my youtube members group i really do appreciate the support and i shall catch you in the next video thanks again for watching bye for now